Hello there, welcome. Um, today's video is about Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. If your machine, if you have one of these PCs, different sizes, the big ones, or one of these tiny ones, or maybe even laptops. Uh, this video is about how you can turn them into Wi-Fi compatible as well as Bluetooth. So you don't need two different cards. With the same card, you can get both. Now, to make sure that what I'm talking about it actually would work for you, you have to make sure that you have an M.2 slot in your PC. So most of the modern PCs and laptops have M.2 slot. And I'm just going to show you how they look. The, there are two different M.2 slots, uh, one's for SSDs and one for Wi-Fi cards. And they're quite distinctive, if you know. So, this is an M.2 slot for Wi-Fi card, as it says on the M.2 WLAN. So, sometimes it doesn't say, but the way to recognize is, you can see a teeth there, a small one. It's like a divider kind of thing. So, when that's on the left, that is a Wi-Fi card slot. Now, sometimes the position of that little tip can be a little bit further to the left. Uh, don't worry, it is still Wi-Fi. As long as it is on the left side, it is fully Wi-Fi. You see there is one similar to it. And the little tip is on the right hand side. That means that's for the SSD. So you physically won't be able to put a Wi-Fi card in there okay so i got so many different brands here i have dell i have hp lenovo pcs i just got them all out so i can make it easy because obviously this is kind of uh, a an universal solution so you have to make sure that you can uh, Park in any kind of device. So, if you look at this big PC, for example, there is a slot. Actually, it says on the M.2 WRAM. So, as you can see, the little divider kind of thing, it's on the left, which means you can actually turn that into Wi Fi and Bluetooth compatible this HP PC has one in already and this Lenovo one that has the slot here it doesn't actually say but uh, as you can see the divider thing is there just a slight correction earlier on I said that divider thing might be a little bit to the left no I actually meant that divider thing might be a little bit to the right so earlier on in the Dell machine this divider was a little bit to the left so don't worry uh, just have to make sure that if you have this a little bit to the right then you have to make sure you get a card like this you see and card like this they're universal so let me focus it's very annoying see it's got double so which means it can fit onto these and even if he's on onto the left he will still fit so these are more like compatible so just make sure you pay attention to these teeth arrangements. Now once you establish that you do have an M.2 slot, uh, you can proceed. So what you're going to need is one of these cards. Uh, this is an Intel based card. You can have Qualcomm based card as well. So I prefer to have Intel based card in the Intel machines because they seem to work together better. 
and if you pay close attention to these um, you see two different arrows there so and then there are two different slots so these are actually antenna slots um, from best of my knowledge um, you only actually need most of the time just one antenna uh, the one with Uh, sorry, the one with the black arrow. So the black arrow is the main antenna Which means the machine will run mostly from the main antenna. However, sometime when the machine cannot find certain bands or You know the connection is not good. It will switch to the aux one the auxiliary so it's good to have both antennas so this way your machine can get good connection regardless of whatever the situation is so what you have to do is ideally connect two different antennas onto two, two different slots okay so the good antennas uh, maybe the external one connected to main that um, from my experience if you connect the external one to the main it tends to get better signal now now that we, we know that we need the M.2 slot and then we got the card and we need the antennas. Now in terms of antennas, the external one, they look like this. Okay, so just be very careful. The, this one, sorry, focus issue. This particular one, uh, for that you're going to need a hole. And most of the small machines they have holes or maybe it might not be a hole you might have to break it you see that little thing so if you put a screwdriver through there a flat head one and apply just a bit of force it will come off and then what you do is okay so now i have the uh the cover removed what i have to do is simply just feed that through Put the uh, washer thing, I don't know what it is called, and then use this nut. Okay, so now that's all done, so make sure that's really really tight. So, this external antenna half done, what you have to do is just uh, screw the antenna on. Okay, so you just simply screw that on and that's it so you're sorted for the external antenna um, as I said earlier on just to remind you again if you connect the external antenna to the black one the black arrow sometimes it says main and sometimes it doesn't so easy way to remember the black arrow if you connect it to that you're very likely to get good signal but then again it could be the other way around so start start with the black one if it doesn't then you can switch so that's the um, external antenna done now with the internal antenna you have to be a bit creative uh, they come in so many different shapes and forms so you might see this in my ebay account and you might also see one of these ones Okay, so this one comes with slightly longer cable. So this one's better quality and this has got, you see the metal bit, there's more areas. So it's likely to get better signal. Okay, so with this one, you have to be creative and you have to remember a couple of things. The first thing you need to remember, you have to place this somewhere away from that one. If you do that, I mean, ideally, probably wouldn't make much of a difference what you want to do is your machine you want to have the antennas placed in, uh, in so it covers the wide range of areas so if you put one there and then one there which means it's gonna draw signal from the entire house so let's say for example if you placed it and there are some obstruction there this if you placed it there then even if this is obstructed this one's gonna get good signal so you get the idea so 
And that's one thing, placement. Another thing you need to be mindful of is these tiny pieces, they have um, uh, metal enclosures. So you have to place the antenna ideally in a place where uh, once you close the PC, the metal bit of the enclosure doesn't cover the antenna ideally. So in this machine, for example, if I place it there, it's not going to fit. So that's the problem. So this is quite soft, so you can cut it to make it fit. That's one good thing about that this is why I choose this because you can just this uh, ivory looking thing that's actually soft plastic so you can just cut it off or sometimes what I do is I actually place them here not ideal because these are too close but that's the next best solution because if it is covered by the metal bit then Obviously the signals obstructed a bit. So if you stick that on there for this particular machine and feed the wire through there to there. Okay. So that's one example. Let me give you another example. With this HP PC. You see HP, this is our original by the way, placed the antenna right here which is very clever so when the cover itself is closed as you can see this is plastic so the metal bit wouldn't obstruct it yeah so it's very clever the second antenna is right there again it's not covered by any sort of metal enclosure as you can see I said earlier on they place the antennas further apart which just to ensure that if one antenna is covered, the other antenna is doing the job. Okay, so you get the idea. So with this one, you have to get creative. You have to use your imagination, intellect, whatever you call it, just to uh, make sure it's properly done. Uh, you might get this one, this is very tiny. Um, there is not much metal part there, but still does. I've tested it. It, it is quite quite good still But this one if you have tiny space um, for example um, This one if you place it here, it just sits there Not obstructing anything nicely done if you get a bigger PC like that. I would say probably get two of this because these are very long, the cables. Uh, as you can see, the card itself is there and a very good place for antennas are here. So there's a, quite a bit of distance, isn't it? So I would place it somewhere here, one here, or maybe one on the, one on here and then one around here, just to make sure. Or, you see those little holes? Yeah. Problem is, uh, the one I have, the... This is too short. So, if we put it there, then it's not going to reach the card itself. So, this is why you have to let me know if you buy it from me, that which one you want. Because this one, the length is too small. So, if you use this, external antennas it's not gonna reach okay do message me to see if I got something with the longer cable sometimes I do sometimes I don't so just message me so once you got uh, once you got the internal antenna installed and the external installed as well okay let me do that for the sake of having a complete demonstration.
Oh, they just bear with me, nearly there. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, as you can see, I have installed the external antenna there because unfortunately the way Dell this, uh, designed this machine I could put one there but the antennas I got I didn't have time to cut this one to size so I just put it behind there and both of them are on the same side so if they get obstructed uh, it's not the ideal situation but it will be fine just make sure it's not obstructed so you see you got two cables coming from two antennas so what you want to do is the end of this antennas I as I said earlier on for the external one I think is better quality it's got better range as well so I'm gonna use this external one as mine uh, just align them first and then gently press with your nail huh, you should hear the click once you have the satisfactory click you know it's uh, set as you can see it's not coming off and do the same for the second one it can be a bit tricky be patient just don't break anything probably cost you more to replace just one okay so both of them are done so now that you're done what you do is feed that car through and just screw so in my kit I always include one of the screws, it might look slightly different but I'm pretty sure you can figure it out. Now one more, one thing very important is to make sure these wires are really secure so they don't come off. Uh, from personal experience uh, if they come off and they touch any components of the motherboard it can be dangerous because obviously you know imagine you end up shorting it and your mother was fried so make sure these wires are securely set use some tape be generous you know a little bit of tape is not gonna harm and once you're done just start the system off uh, and it's I mean 90% of the case it's gonna automatically um, recognize the card and it's going to work if that's the case just go on to intel's uh, driver updates website which would be in the link in the description and download the drivers and we're good to go but sometime if they don't work you might have to go onto the internet from another pc that has internet connection type this model number uh, this one for example 8260 ngw and then it will uh, show you the Intel's website. So from the website, download the driver, install them manually. That should work. If that doesn't work, do check the BIOS settings. Sometimes some companies, they disabled Wi-Fi in the BIOS setting. So check that as well. All right, hopefully that was well explained. If something I missed, just leave a comment or just message me. Thank you.